Welcome again to OpenSys Modeling. Today we are going to build an incremental dynamic analysis by using MATLAB and OpenSys. Um, the model that we will be using is the same that we used before for the videos related to your first OpenSys model. So if you haven't watched those videos, I recommend you to have a look as uh, the modeling approach and some of the analysis parameters are discussed discuss in those videos. Uh, for, for this video, we're going to perform, a, like I said, an incremental dynamic analysis. Therefore, we need to perform a gravity analysis first, then a model analysis, and then finally, a series of nonlinear dynamic analysis, or basically time history analysis, with multiple scale ground motions and with increasing intensities in order to uh, at the end have an incremental dynamic analysis. For today's analysis, these are the files that we're going to be using. Uh, first of all, I have a folder that contains the ground motions that we're going to be using. Uh, this file of ground motions is a MATLAB file that basically contains the accelerations, the time step, and the number of steps for each ground motion. In this case, I have 30 ground motions uh, with two components. Um, then uh, we have the main file of MATLAB that will be controlling the entire analysis, and I will show you at the end. Then we have the analysis for the gravity, the analysis for model, uh, the analysis time for the time history. We have uh, the model itself. We have uh, the OpenSys framework. We have uh, this W section uh, piece uh, of TCL uh, code that I have discussed in previous videos that is basically going to build sections for the fiber-based elements. And finally, uh, this is a small piece of MATLAB software that will perform uh, or will help us to scale the ground motions, like I will explain you later. So um, the first uh, file that I want to see is uh, the example model. In this case, the main model that we will be using. This model is exactly the same model that we have used before, the one that I showed you in previous videos. Uh, the only difference, I'm going to just go straight to the end, is that I slightly modified uh, the loads, as you can see in these two lines, and also the masses, uh, just because I was more comfortable with these numbers that are uh, perhaps more realistic for this frame. And since we're going to be scaling the ground motions, we want to obtain results that are closer uh, to, to a real structure. The second file that I want to check is uh, the gravity analysis that is uh, exactly the same file that we have been using before. So this is exactly the same file from previous videos. Nothing was changed. Uh, then we have also the analysis model. Uh, in this analysis model, um, I have, uh, again, two recorders, uh, in this case for the, for the eigenvalues. And basically, I'm just performing exactly the same procedure as I did before in previous videos. And finally, I have this analysis time history um, that is exactly the same file that I used before, except that I have modified a few things. First of all, you will notice that K and J are commented because these two values are now going to be exported from the MATLAB directly rather than uh, input in... in in the TCL file as we did before. Then I, ha I have erased some of the recorders. I commented them because I'm not going to be using them today. I'm just going to focus on this recorder that is the uh, displacement at the stories, uh, in this case in the first and the second story. Obviously you can add or remove as many recorders as uh, you require for your analysis. I am also removing all the part of the Riley Diping uh, coefficients calculation because I am doing it directly in the MATLAB code. Um, I am also removing uh, the scaling of the ground motion, uh, the, the, the time step, and the number of steps for the ground motion, as these values are also going to be imported from the MATLAB. And finally, um, I have added, everything else is the same in this part, but I have added three uh, small lines here at the end. So basically, when we have a successful analysis, basically when we find convergence, uh, I want to have 
a new file that will be called Successful Nonlinear Time History Analysis that will be appended or will be we will have new values added uh, every time we have a successful analysis. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to get is uh, the value of k and the value of j that represent the, the identifier for the ground motion and the identifier for the scaling. Uh, in case we uh, have a failed uh, analysis, so basically we cannot find the convergence uh, for any reason, that's something that uh, I won't be discussing here, but if for any reason we cannot find convergence, uh, I'm going to be storing it in a different file that will be called unsuccessful non-linear time history analysis. And this is just because uh, I want to keep track of uh, which analysis actually were successful and which analysis were unsuccessful. For today's video, every single analysis will be successful. So we'll have only, we will have only this case, but this is uh, a good practice. I mean, it's always a good idea to have some way of tracking which analysis are actually converging and which ones are not. Uh, because th then the ones that are not converging, um, you might have to uh, pay attention on what is the issue. If you have probably to, to improve your algorithm for the analysis, uh, there are some algorithms that, uh, for example, after trying this time step, it's going to try again with a smaller time step or uh, with an increased uh, tolerance or many other uh, approaches that you can follow. But in any case, it's always important to have a track of which ones are working and which ones are not. So now I'm going to be working with the MATLAB script that is called main file. That is the one that is going to be controlling the entire analysis. I'm going to assume at this point that you already know some MATLAB uh, or at least the basics of MATLAB. Um, so in case you have any questions, please refer to the uh, MATLAB uh, help websites that you can find everywhere or YouTube videos or MATLAB uh, um, on ramp. That is a training program produced by MATLAB itself. So you can have a better understanding of some of the commands and the structure of this program. So basically what I'm doing here is, first of all, I'm cleaning the workspace by using these three commands. After that, I'm, I am inputting some values uh, into the MATLAB. The first one is uh, the damping that I will be using in my structure, in this case, 3% for the first and second mode. Then after that, I am loading the file that contains the ground motions. For this, uh, let me stop for a second and show you this, um, this file in particular. So as you can see here, I'm going to execute this part so I have a clean workspace. Uh, when I execute this part, I will be loading uh, this file, LA30, that is here, uh, that basically contains this uh, variable, ACC, that contains the values of acceleration for a total of 60 ground motions. That is basically actually 30 ground motions with two components each, X and Y. So basically, these two are the first, uh, the first ground motion, these two are the second ground motion, etc. Then I have the values of dt for each ground motion. This is the, the dt for the ground motion, not for the analysis. The one for the analysis is something that I decide uh, directly in my TCL uh, analysis script. And then also the number of steps for each ground motion. In this case, each of these ground motions will have a different length, so it is reflected by using the dt and the number of steps. Um, after that, I am defining a, a variable called acceler uh, accelerograms vector. That is basically which columns or which accelerograms I want to use in my analysis. For this example, I'm going to be using only five accelerograms. The number one, three, five, seven, and nine. So basically from one to nine in two by two. Uh, so five ground motions. Then I am also defining a variable that is called GM scaling that will uh, define what will be the, 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 the scaling factor that we will use for these ground motions. In this case, I am going from 0 0.1 to 1G in steps of 0 0.1 by 0 0.1. So basically I'm going to have 10 different uh, scaling factors for five different uh, ground motions so I will have 50 analyses. Obviously, if you increase these numbers, if you increase the number of accelerograms, and if you refine or increase the scaling, uh, you will need a larger amount of memory. 
depending on the number of recordings that you are uh, saving and also on which ones you are keeping and which ones you are erasing during your analysis. After that, I'm going to perform the model analysis. In this case, uh, the model analysis will be called by the MATLAB. So basically what I'm doing here is I am building a new file that will be called inputmodal.tcl that has a permission to write. And what I'm going to write in it is wipe. Uh, as you remember, it's a command that is used for the OpenSys to erase everything in the analysis and the model. The second thing that I'm going, I'm going to write is the model itself. So example model one. And that's why I use the word source. That is the one that we were using for the analysis in OpenSys directly. And then I'm going to uh, write the analysis that I'm looking for. In this case, the analysis model. Uh, and finally, I'm going to close the file. So if I execute this part of the code, I'm going to do it by pressing F9. You will notice that in my folder, I will I will obtain I will obtain a new file that is called input model, and this input model, when I open it, basically contains those three lines that I have just uh, written in the MATLAB. So these three lines that you can see here. After that, I'm going to perform the analysis. To perform the analysis, I'm going to, to, to execute the DOS command directly from MATLAB. Uh, I'm going to tell it that I'm using the OpenSys, which is basically what I was doing in the black window that I used before, in the DOS window. And finally, uh, I am calling the name of the file that I have just created before. When I do this, everything is going to be executed automatically, so I'm going to press F9. And as you can see, I have new files here on the left. Uh, that are basically the recorders that were created after the analysis. After this point, uh, since I don't want to have the recorders and all these files uh, just uh, here creating a mess in my main, in my main folder, uh, I'm going to perform a certain number of operations that will uh, change the extension of the files because I prefer to work with text files rather than out files that are the, the files that come by default in, in the OpenSys, as you can see, they are dot out. I want to change them to dot txt. And also I want to move them to a new folder that will be called results modal because I don't want them to be here right in the main folder. So I'm going to execute this part of the code. And as you can see, there is a new folder created, results modal, and the other three files are gone. Um, if you have any questions with this part of the code or anything that I have discussed, Remember that you can always download every single piece of code that I show you uh, at the bottom of my video, uh, right in the um, in, in the description. Uh, after that, I'm going to call these files again. I'm going to open them. So I'm going to read table uh, because, as you remember, uh, this file model analysis no the eigenvectors eigenvalues is actually in the format of a table just because we decided to write it that way. And I'm going to use uh, this indexing approach for tables in order to call the values for T1 and T2 automatically. So basically, when I execute this part of the code, I am going to read the file model analysis node again uh, values. I'm going to store it in, in a variable called temp that you will see now in here. If I open this variable, you will notice that I have exactly the table that we have created before with the periods of our structure, the first and the second period. The first period that corresponds to the coordinate tree, or in this case, the, 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 the period, and the first row, one. Remember that this is indexing for a table, therefore, it's done the other way around. So first the column, and then the row. Uh, and same thing for the second uh, period, in this case, for the second row, rather than the first one. Once I have the value of t1 and t2 assigned directly in a, in a, in a variable here, um, I'm going to also uh, uh, extract the eigenvectors, and this is probably something that I would need for the pushover analysis. Uh, in this case, I don't really need it. I'm just going to do it uh, because I think it's part of uh, understanding the structure better. So basically what I do here is I read uh, the, the eigenvectors files that I created with my recorders, and I'm going to assign them to a variable called mode1 and mode2 with this for cycle. Uh, so when I run this part, you will notice that I have mode one and mode two, as you can see here. The mode one 
is characterized by this vector, the mode 2 is characterized by this vector, and now I'm also going to normalize them in order to have something uh, easier or more common, like in this case 0, 0.43 and 1. This is useful, like I said, for example, for a pushover analysis, if you want to have uh, mode proportional loads or, or a pattern for the loads, then in this case uh, you can use this approach. So at this point, we have already uh, performed the model analysis from which we are obtaining the T1 and the T2. Um, with these two values, we can now uh, estimate the parameters for the Rayleigh damping, uh, all, uh, commonly known as alpha and beta, but also known as A0 and A1, uh, depending on the textbook that you're referring to. So I'm going to run this part of the code. Uh, and then I have the two parameters that I'm interested on. After this, the next section, this one that I'm selecting right now, uh, what I'm doing is I am scaling the ground motions uh, in order to prepare them for the, for the analysis. Uh, basically, in the incremental dynamic analysis, uh, I have to choose an intensity measure to be used as a reference for the analysis. The most commonly used intensity measure for buildings is the uh, spectral acceleration at the first period. Therefore, this loop that you can see here, it normalizes every single one of the ground motions in order to uh, force the spectra of all the, the accelerograms to pass exactly through the same point when they are uh, at a value of period of T1, in this case, the first period of the structure. So basically what I do here is, uh, first of all, I select the ground motion that I'm going to scale. So I go one by one, basically I'm just selecting the, the the ground motion in order to isolate it from the rest of, of the others in the matrix. Uh, then I obtain the spectral acceleration by using uh, this function uh, that is called set spectral, and I will show you in a second, that basically uh, it is fed by uh, including the period of the structure, the damping, the accelerogram itself, and uh, the, the, the size of the, of the step or the DT for the ground motion. Uh, so what it does at the end is after obtaining the spectral acceleration, it will normalize the ground motion corresponding to this uh, earthquake by the spectral acceleration of the same ground motion. So basically every single spectra is going to pass through a value of one when uh, the period is equal to T1. Um, the set spectral function that you can see defined here, is basically this small function uh, that is going to find the spectral displacement, the spe spectral velocity and the spectral acceleration uh, through the Newmark algorithm. Uh, just as to mention that this script wasn't um, built by me. However, I don't have the original author to credit uh, her or him, uh, but just bear in mind that this um, this uh, small script is widely used um, in academy. So after this, let me open again my my file. So uh, I'm going to scale the ground motions. So I'm going to run this part of the code. There it goes. So now my accelerograms are scaled. Um, the next line is to delete. Uh, you remember that I mentioned about these successful and unsuccessful files that are going to record if uh, the analysis uh, did converge or not. And I am erasing any traces of this file because basically in the TCL I am appending this file, which means that if I already have this file, it's not going to be replaced. It's just going to be appended every time I run the analysis. And I obviously want to have a new file every time I, I run the analysis. So I'm going to run this part by pressing F9. The next line is this uh, thick that basically is going to start the timer in order to count uh, the time that it takes to run the analysis. Um, after that, this section of the code, what I'm doing here is I am creating a vector, actually a matrix that I call the run matrix, that basically, basically contains all the combinations of K, which represents the, the tag for the earthquake, and J, which represents the tag for the scaling factor. 
uh, and it does all the possible combinations or all the required combinations, and it creates a, a matrix that will be used as an input for the next part of the code. So basically, when I run this part of the code, and I open the run matrix, you will notice that I have the first earthquake with the first scaling factor, the first earthquake with the second scaling factor. Just bear in mind that this is the tag of the scaling factor, not the scaling factor itself. Since I have 50 combinations, if I go to the end of this list, you will notice that I have earthquake 9 with a uh, scaling factor tag number 10. After this, I have this big cycle that you can see here. Um, so this 4 cycle, um, in this case, is specifically a par 4. So the only difference between a 4 and a par 4 is that the par 4 is going to use all of the cores of your computer to run parallel four cycles. So basically, in my case, for example, that I have four cores in my computer, I will be running four analyses at the same time rather than one by one. So it will definitely increase the efficiency of your, of your analysis. Uh, it has some problems sometimes. Uh, first of all, you need to install a toolbox, a special toolbox in MATLAB. But then uh, if you have it sometimes also, uh, there are some issues depending on the on the speed of your hard drive that some of the results might get overwritten. Uh, however, that often happens when the analysis time is very short, like less than a second, for example. Any analysis time that is longer than one or two seconds shouldn't be a problem for uh, to, uh, to be analyzed in this way. So I use the PAR4 in order to increase the efficiency of my multiple analysis for the incremental dynamic analysis. So basically what I do is in each cycle, I will go from one, and I'm using this identifier, TH, that means time history, and I go from one until the size of the run matrix or the, the, the length. In this case, it's going to be 50 because I have 50 different combinations. Uh, in each of them, it's going to read the value for K from the run matrix and the value for J from the run matrix as well. Um, after that, what it does, the first thing that it does, it's going to write a new file that is going to be called ax underscore the number of the accelerogram, in this case, the k, dot text. So basically, it's going to export the accelerogram to a text file. Why do we do this? Because the OpenSys reads the, the accelerogram values directly from a text file. I mean, I could export it directly to the OpenSys, but this is a, a cleaner way to do it. So I export the file to a text file uh, that has a, a, the, just the values of the accelerogram with a certain uh, format within MATLAB, and then I close that file. Once this text file is generated with the accelerogram, I create a second file, the input time history file. The input time history file has two variables within its name, the, no, the number of the ground motion or the tag for the ground motion and the tag for the, for the uh, scaling factor. And I'm writing this, this file, which by the way is a TCL. So the first thing I am writing in this file is wipe in order to start a new analysis. Also, uh, in most analysis, I also put it at the end, but just to make sure that I'm starting a new analysis. Uh, then I am setting the lambda. In this case, the lambda is the scaling factor itself. So it corresponds to the J value of the GM scaling vector. And that's why I'm, I'm indexing this J, or sorry, I'm indexing this GM scaling by using the J here. Uh, then I'm also exporting the K and the J in order to uh, use them for the naming of the recorders that will be uh, coming out of the analysis. I'm also exporting the number of steps of the ground motion. So basically, I already ac exported the accelerogram, but now I'm exporting also the number of the steps, the size of the steps, as you can see, number of the step, and uh, dt. Uh, the value of alpha and beta for the Rayleigh damping. And finally, uh, the model itself, the gravity analysis, and the analysis of the time history. Um, once I run the analysis of time history, all of these variables that I'm writing here are the ones that were missing in my, in my TCL script. Therefore, they will be automatically recognized because they were declared even before uh, declaring the model itself. So they are already acknowledged by, by, 
the TCL. Um, after I have created this, this or opened this uh, file, I have put all the content, contents of the file, I close it, and then I use this command that I mentioned before in order to run it. In this case, open sys, input time history, that is the name of, of the file, with the K earthquake and the J scaling factor. Uh, so I'm going to run this part of the code. Uh, this will take a couple minutes, so I will continue the video once it's finished. So at this point, uh, the analysis is still running. Uh, it's still not finished. I just want to show you a, a few things. First of all, you can see the analysis is running and it's giving me, for example, the first earthquake with uh, the, the, the scaling eight it has started running and it's giving me all the here it has finished exactly that that same tag is finishing right here it's saying that it's successfully uh, as you can see i am getting all the files created here actually i have a list of files now being created first earthquake uh third earthquake fifth earthquake etc uh the successful uh file as well i have it here if i open it since it doesn't have an extension it's going to ask me what i want to use i will use uh, just the, the notepad and as you can see, I have all the combinations here that have su succeeded this far uh, written directly in this file. And I also can check how uh, how many cores are working in the analysis. If I go here and I just hover above this uh, button here, it says that I have four workers because my computer has four cores working at the same time. So uh, let's uh, wait until the analysis finishes. So at this point, uh, the analysis is finished. Um, if I open uh, the, the file, well, you can see that here on the left, I have every single file, including the, the recorders. And if I open the file of successful uh, time histories, you can see that I reach line number 50, which means that all of my analyses were successful. Um, after this, what I'm going to do is a similar process that I did before with the model analysis. So I'm basically going to change the extensions from out to text, just because I feel more comfortable working with this extension. Also, there are many ways to work with the out extensions as well. Um, and then I'm going to remove all those files that I don't need anymore. Like for example, the out files that are left in the main folder, as well as the text for the text files and the input, uh, the, the files here starting with input. Like for example, all of this input time history that at the moment I don't need them anymore. So I basically select this, I press F9. And then as you can see, they are slowly uh, being moved. I have a new folder that is called results time history. And I, the only file that I have left here is a successful uh, NLTHA. And you can also move it if you want, or you can leave it there. So at this point that I have already defined every single one uh, of my analysis and I have already run, and I can see that I have all of my results uh, in the form of out, uh, sorry, text files, as you can see here, every single uh, uh, displacement history uh, containing both uh, stories. If I open one of these, you will notice that I have uh, the first column represents the, the the time, the second one represents the displacement of the first story, and the second one, the third one represents the displacement in the second story. So I have all this information. I need to find a way to extract it. In this case, I'm going to extract only the, the maximum interstory drift ratio. Basically, as you know, the interstory drift ratio is just the, the difference uh, or the rate, let's say the difference uh, between the deformation in one story with respect to the one below divided by the height of the story. And that's basically what I'm doing here. So for the first story, for example, uh, I am indexing IDR max J represents the scaling, K represents the earthquake, and just because I want to have this as row and this as columns, because it makes more sense when you look as the scaling in, in the in the let's say vertically, why the ground motions you see them horizontally. I think it makes more sense when you want to see them or to check them manually. And then finally, the first layer represents the first story, and the second layer represents the second story. So I have a, a variable here with three different indexes. Uh, let's say it's like a 3D matrix, we could call it. And basically, I'm getting the maximum of the absolute value of uh, the, the 
extract the second column of the extracted information from the file divided by the height of the story. Same thing here, I'm just doing the subtraction because in this case it's a difference because it's the second story minus the first story, also divided by 3.5. Um, so you'll notice that I'm also pre-allocating the memory by using this zeros function. This is not mandatory, but when the analysis are very large, uh, it will help to reduce uh, the amount of work, sorry, the amount of time that uh, the analysis is going to, to take. So if I run this part of the script by pressing F9, you will notice that in a second, because it's still thinking, uh, I will get the value of IDR max. So once I have found, now it is here. So once I have this value, you will notice uh, these are the dimensions on my, of, my, of my file. You can see that this is my file. So basically this is the maximum, inter well, the interstory derivation for the first story. This is for the first ground motion and for each of the 10 uh, scaling factors. You will notice that there are some columns with zero and this is because I was using the accelerogram vector uh, by skipping y, one column to avoid the y component of the earthquakes. However, I can simply solve it by using this line here. So if I execute this line, you will notice that everything becomes more compact because I'm basically just uh, indexing this or let's say overwriting this variable with the same values of the variable but only considering those indexes that I care about in the column direction. And then finally, I'm just um, also drawing a figure because I want to see the results in a very uh, concise way to understand what is happening with my structure. Uh, so basically what I do is a four cycle in which I go uh, from the first ground motion to the fifth ground motion in this case. So the length of the accelerogram vector that in this case would be five uh, because I have five values within the, the vector. And then I'm going to have in the horizontal axis the intensity measure. In this case, it's it's the same that saying that is the, the, the scaling that I use divided by 9.81 in order to have a G rather than, than meter per square second as it would be the, the default. Um, and in the vertical axis, I have the interstory uh, drift ratio maximum for every single one of the of the intensities for each earthquake in the in the fourth cycle, for the first story and for the second story. You can see the first story is black, and it's uh, it's a star, while the second story is red, and it's a circle. Uh, so if I run this part of the code. I will simply get this very nice figure that you can see here uh, with a summary of what I did right now. So as you can see, uh, MATLAB represents a very versatile option and it's actually very comfortable to work with the, with the OpenSys. It has advantages and disadvantages uh, in comparison, for example, with using directly the TCL. Um, the main disadvantage is probably the, the speed because MATLAB is not very good at opening and closing uh, files. However, um, I think uh, the fact that you can have everything in a single document, or maybe in different documents, but everything within the same language, and the fact that you can do these plots so easily, I think it, it, it uh, makes MATLAB a very powerful tool to be used uh, together with, with your OpenSys scripts whenever you're doing uh, repetitive tasks. So, for example, uh, an incremental dynamic analysis or a cloud analysis or any other repetitive task. From this point, you can, for example, derive fragility curves if that's what you're looking uh, to do uh, because you have now all the data in the intensity measure versus your engineering demand parameter, whatever you choose it to be. So I hope this video was useful. Uh, let me know if you have uh, any questions in the comments. Uh, I try to reply as much as I can. Uh, if not, you can always email me or email Arash uh, and we will be happy to reply to your questions. Bye-bye.